Okay, hi everyone. I'm gonna spoke, speak about religious topics in debate. Be free to ask anything because you asked nothing before it when you had the first chance, but you can ask again if you need. So first of all, in the first part of this speech I will talk about Islam and some topics based on Islam and why is it important in the debates. Then I will talk more about Catholic Church and debates involved about Catholics and then we will talk generally about religious religion as well. First of all, in Islam, basically you have one major split, Sunni and Shia. Uh, Su Sunni is more dominant. I found data that says around 75-80% of Muslims are Sunni. Shia are around 11 or 12%. And uh, Sunni dominate in Southeast Asia, Africa and I found China. Apparently, they are, there is an Islam in China. Shia, while they dominate in Iran, Iraq, and Bahrain, biggest Sunni country is Indonesia, while biggest country of Shia is Iran. Uh, what is the split about? Basically, it was all one religion while the Prophet Muhammad was alive. He died. Six hundred thirty. Second, yeah. yeah, okay. And they split basically on his legacy because lectures of Prophet Muhammad were made in order. So there were very few written evidence what Muhammad said. So they started arguing about his legacy. Sunni group was led by Aisha's father, and Aisha was Muhammad's wife, and uh, Shia was led by son-in-law of Muhammad, Ali. And since then, that is a huge split up, uh, mainly differences in that Islamic world but that led to numerous wars, conflicts, and they perceive one another as a cult. They say that another group is a cult. But what is also important in Shia's community is that Ayatollahs have huge political power. So religious leaders have huge political impact, while with Sunnis it's not the case. So Shia, minority, Shia group has a bigger connection of religion and politics than their Sunnis. Uh, Sunni extremists became popular and known as Islamic State ISIS. I found that they were established back in 1999. I was surprised. Under a different name, which was hard to pronounce, but now, for marketing reasons, they changed their name to Islamic State, which is very easy to pronounce and remember. <laughs> and they overnight established huge popularity worldwide because the name is so powerful and catchy and easy, while before it was God, Allah, 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 Okay. Uh, and here I found one thing that I'd like to point out. Importance of year 1979. Why would you maybe want to remember basically in this Sunnah and Shia conflict? And generally speaking, it is important here. Do you know what happened? Any examples of what happened in 1979 that is important? Yeah, the, like the revolution in Iran. Okay, Iran, Iran revolution. Yeah. Okay. Second thing, Saddam Hussein came to power in Iraq. That two things led to Iraq-Iran war from 1980 to 1988. One of the biggest conflicts recently with the use of chemical and biological weapons. As well, it is important because Soviets invaded Afghanistan in that year. It is believed that that, start, that, that war started huge cost deaths and Soviet Union into recession and problems which led to the end of Soviet Union. So that is why 1979 is important in those three main reasons. Iran revolution that, was, that led to Shia Ayatollahs now. It was highly secular in the period of 1953-1979. Now you have a religious 
huge impact on political and everyday life. Saddam Hussein is gaining power. They are, they are fighting for basically oil fields in some parts. Saddam invaded Iran and that caused eight year long war. Okay, so basically there was an interesting debate about Reza Aslan. He wrote, he talked how important it is to explain that female genital mutation, like cutting off clitoris, is mainly accused by uh, public, it's connected to Islam. And he said basically that is not a problem of Islam, it's a problem of Africa. And he explained that also you can see in the debate Ethiopia has a problem with female genital mutation and that is a Christian country with 75% of Christians. What he failed to say is that there, were, there is not yet significant research about other parts of countries hasn't been done. It was only done statistics in Africa. But there are reports that uh, that FGM, as they call it, is done in countries like Iraq with Kurdish population, in countries like Indonesia, Malaysia, India, Pakistan with Bokhara community. So mainly that mean that happens that is connected with Islam. Also you need to know that uh, there are four religious groups in Sunni, majority leads world. Two of them support these activities with cutting off the clitoris of the women, while two others don't have content, didn't make any comments about it. We don't know, but they are not strongly against it. So basically you can claim that Sunni is mainly supporting, or at least it is not against female gender orientation. As well, he, uh, there is a big problem saying how Islamic states suppress women in a political system. Then you say how six countries, Islamic countries, has had a woman as a political leader. That is also you need to know. If someone says that to you in a debate, you can elaborate in a, in a different way. Pakistan, the lady that was in charge when I forgot her name, you need to know that her father was a really powerful, connected system. Uh, she had connections. So she was elected mainly because of the population of popularity of her father. Bangladesh, woman was a leader as well, but her father was father of the country. He established Bangladesh, so his influence was as well huge. Indonesia had a lady that was in charge of the country. The problem was that was Sukarto's daughter. Sukarto was in charge of Indonesia back for 32 years, 1965-1997. So she had support of that old system. So mainly it's not like she was, people voted for her because she was a woman or whatever. As well you have countries like Turkey, Turkey and Kyrgyzstan, highly secular societies. Turkey because of Kemal Atatürk, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, his reform after the World War I, he really made some huge impacts on Turkish life. He made it secular. He said no to burkas. He uh, changed the alphabet of the language. He banned the religious schools. So you can't say. So you can say that uh, Turkey having a lady as a president is mainly consequence of Ataturk's legacy. Kyrgyzstan as well was part of Soviet Union. So communist country, highly secular. As well, so it is a question really that is, ladies in Islamic world uh, are suppressed in a way, politically speaking. Do you have any questions about this part of Islamic culture? Okay. Uh, yeah, I do. Okay. You said something about the the Sunni were based upon a, a, the some a woman who was the leader of the Sunni part. No, Aisha's father was a leader. Oh. Aisha was wife of Muhammad. 
Okay. The, the cougar. It would be a probably a different story if a lady was in charge of one of major groups of his own. Okay. Uh, it's not, it? Yes? Uh, concerning uh, how much liberal the groups are, uh, how would you compare she and Sunnis with regard to liberal life and everyday life? <laughs> I know that the Sunnis are more conservative, but yes. how Sunnis are more conservative, where it means people of tradition, something means translation. You can't find really that connection about uh, every country is a bit different, so it's not a question Sunni or Shia. What is important to say is that in Shia countries, religious leaders are important political figures, while in Sunni is not. That, that's what you can find. So, well, speaking politically, every country is a bit different, no matter is it Sunni or Shia, there is no strict correlation. Okay? Okay. Any more questions? Okay. We'll move to Catholics. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, Catholics are more prone to changing their policies in a in a religious world than other groups like Orthodox or Protestants. Main example is suicide. What? Suicide. Suicide. Policy towards the suicide. Because in other Christian groups, suicide is highest sin. Because you you know you understand what I'm saying. You can't for nobody can forgive you because you are dead. And and while in Catholics, they've, they've said that science said basically, in the moment that you commit suicide, you are not rational, you are not normal, you are not mental, so it's not a sin because it's not your fault. That, that came up like in the 1980s, I think that was a huge change because it was a big split and a huge debate in a Catholic Church regardless of suicide question. So my point is that uh, Catholics are more open, more prone to change than some other Christian groups. Um, so basically you have like a lot of debates about prosecuting religious leaders. First thing that comes up from the opening government is we should trial the Pope. It's like reflex, yeah. <laughs> so, does anyone have any idea why it's a reflex when somebody says prosecute religious leader? First thing that pops up, trial the Pope. Any? Okay. So, basically, the reason is it was, there are so many reasons, but okay, we should start with maybe. It was proven in Ireland, more than 150 reported cases of pedophilia that was known to Catholic Church, the Vatican, and they suppressed it. Basically, it went to the highest level of hierarchy in Vatican. They moved those Irish Catholic priests from Ireland to just different English-speaking parts of the world. They did massive cover-up. It was a huge problem. And they went, nobody was prosecuted because it was a religious group. More than 150 cases of pedophilia were proven that exist, but nobody was responsible. Nobody was held responsible. So basically, when you say we should prosecute the Pope, you can say in Ireland it was proven 150 cases. Yes. But how much is the Pope to blame for that? I, I, I said it came to highest ranks of Vatican. Yeah, but I, I can't find okay, it. Okay. Uh, I understand your point. Why we should trial the Pope? He is in charge of the system, at least he should have known that something is going on. Right? Like, simple, because he, he is in charge of what his cabinet is doing. So he was informed. Second thing that was important, connections of Catholic Church and fascist regimes all around the world mainly Latin America and Spain, Franco's regime. It was highly supported by Catholic Church, Catholic Church, in the Balkans, in Croatia during World War II, in Latin America, all sorts of countries were supported. Current Pope was big supporter of Argentina's military junta. 
So he's now changed his PR and marketing, but he was in fact in very good with Juntas and anti-democratic societies. Highest support of anti of, of fascist regimes in uh, from Vatican came during Karol Joseph. Do you know who is Karol Joseph? Pope John Pope. His, his name is Karol Joseph, also known as Half of the Beatles, John Paul. <laughs> okay, sorry. Basically, he was from Poland and he was strictly anti communist, and he said basically, we don't support anybody who is against communism, we have nothing against fascist things for dictators. And what is the relationship, relations, whatever, of uh, Catholic Church today and the leftist movement? I will go yes, it's my next point talking about. Okay, John Paul was, was he banned any cardinals that had any leftist ideas. But this new pope, he, he made charges dropped against leftist, communist, Marxist, or whatever, Catholic leaders. Mostly notable cases, meanwhile, the Escoto, he, is, he was a leader, I will send you those information, he was leader of that Marxist, some Marxist, Marxist group. He was evicted from Catholic Church back in 1985, and he became really important in the UN. And now new pope has reversed him from all his sins. He said that he forgives. And you have a statement from this pope that says that he met a lot of great people that are Marxist, which is kind of big step toward leftist Marxism. And compared to John Paul, it's huge step towards leftist and Marxism. The problem is uh, mainly because Catholic Church and leftist Marxist ideas are mainly connected in Latin America. They're combined there. Hugo Chavez was something like Catholic leftist. And you have a lot of those ideas because people were suppressed by various juntas. They are very religious. They are left is because now they feel suppressed, robbed by evil right-wing systems. And, they, and now you have huge influence of cardinals from Latin America that are moving Vatican to the left, basically, to say. G? Yes? Like, say for instance that a new pope tries turning more to the center or more to the right, how well would that fare given the political circumstances in Latin America? I mean, I guess that he could sway them to the left because they would generally be socialist because they're being robbed by USA, but how well could it work in reverse, if it could? Okay. Well, during the 80s, they moved to the right anti-communism and they supported the various juntas and dictatorships. So you had a case when they were on the right. So, so they can go right, they can support anybody like in Argentina, Spain, other countries. So you had cases when they were on the right. Now they are moving to the left. We don't know how on the left it will look, but we know how that looked while they were supporting Tim Pot dictators and other anti-democratic societies. So, uh, good book about Vatican and their influences, Sins of Vatican, Claudio Rendino, it's a problem in Maastricht, and as well, Hitler spoke and talks more about Vatican and Nazi regime and all sorts. Talking about Germany, huge problem in Catholic, problem in Catholic Church is about condoms in Africa. For example, because Catholic Church, as you know, is against condoms mainly. But in Africa that's a huge problem because HIV and AIDS and everything. Fun fact is that Pope Benedict, Benedict was in favor of condoms. He said it officially in 2009, but still there is 
huge anti-condoms, anti-abortion lobby Vatican conservatives, mainly Catholic churches, anti-condoms, and they, even the new Pope said it. But you have certain elements and groups like Pope Benedict, because he went to Africa and he saw what AIDS has done in HIV. So he said, I can't be against it if condoms will stop this from happening, which is kind of logical. Uh, about gay rights, well, as well, that generally new pope is more prone to gay gays. He said something neutral. I can't judge them if they are good people, no matter what is their sexual orientation, which is a big step forward because, as I said, basically, churches and religious groups, especially Catholics, are strictly against gays. You even have a case in Denmark where church is, church allowed same-sex marriages in church, no? not by the state of Denmark, so in church you can have same-sex marriages. That is the first case the church said yes to same-sex marriages in their state. Does anyone have a question? Uh, I'll find ready. Okay. Uh, about fractions uh, in the Catholic Church, uh, the conservative and the liberal one, how does that work? Uh, how the ideas at the end of the power should be decided? Or really? <laughs> to go more neutral on the gays. As you, as you have hardcore leftist groups in Vatican that are moving to the left that Vatican. So those groups, those lobby groups can move in a certain way. Vatican, they are not ruling them, but they have huge impact on the policy of Vatican. They can move it. They can make it, as we see on the question of gays, they can make Vatican to be at least neutral, yes? Uh, is there any opposition to Pope's policies within the Catholic Church, like public opposition? Those are yes, the hard -core, core, there is a huge hardcore right wing uh, saying no to condoms, no to gays, no to nothing. Currently, they are losing it. Poss possible that in a certain, in a, some other Pope will. The, that hardcore group will win. Basically, states are secular, so they have, that doesn't have impact on legislation, but cultural narrative is hugely impacted by, by the church. So there is an opposition currently, they are not so strong, that can change. Now it's more neutral on gays, more leftists, more those cardinals from the Latin America have more influence because now they have hope from there. And this I mean, you can finish the sentence, but uh, I know we should But the thing is, how much power does the Pope actually have? Does, is his word the law, or do people have the, or do they have to pass it through some, I don't know, Senate or something like that? Council of our Cardinals? Yeah. That's what I'm asking. So, I'm not sure what is the. Popes. I mean, no, like, no, what is the limit to his power? Does he say, like, now we live like gays and the church has to follow that, or does the council say that the Pope council is idiot? The council is more powerful than the Pope. Okay. The Pope has more impact speaking on the culture and narrative. More, more people listen to the Pope, and more people will respect gays, more, even, and more people will use condoms if Pope said it because they believe Pope is chosen. But counselor, I believe, as I read, they are the ones that set religious policy, I would say, how to express it. Okay. Thank you. So, when we talk why, okay, if religious groups they and their influence about politic, political life, do you have any examples, any comments, any ideas how that functions? How religious groups impact political, political life? Yes. Republican Party? 
I wanted to say it in America, not a single American president who was an atheist. You can't be chosen to be a president if you are an atheist. It's not important that much which religious group you are, as long as you are atheist. So basically, that's how, that's how religious groups are important, in a sense. As I said, now it was a good way to show Catholic Church, as I said, support leftist government in Latin America. The good point is basically it's payback time because they supported the right wing in court. Dictators during the 80s, during John Paul and other groups, so they should now turn, turn back to the leftists and sh and left this because basically it is a payback time. When we talk about influence of religious people, the religious leaders to the politicians, do you know which which is the only case when politician leader of a Western country said no to the Pope? Henry the Seventh. Henry the Seventh. More recent, no? <laughs> 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 If I say ding dong, which is that, does that ring any bell? What? Maggie Thatcher? Maggie Thatcher. Do you know why she said no to the Pope? What was the problem? Basically, British politics towards Irish Catholics. To put it mildly, it's problematic. <laughs> so, they treated Irish Catholics in prisons like, I don't know how to explain it, but like, they are not living beings. And, and they started a hunger strike during the beginning of the 80s. Yoda can do it. And Pope John Paul, half of the Beatles, as I said, he tried to intervene to the Maggie Thatcher to give better conditions for those Catholics in prisons. And of course, she said no. There is a reason why they called, it, called her Iron Lady. Rich. Of course. So, Bobby Sands died in prison during that period of time. Which made it problematic because the Irish Republican Army now had more power, more media coverage, they had huge support, and they, that, that's the reason why they tried to kill, kill her back in 1983 in Brighton. Unfortunately, she lived for another. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. One of famous leaders of leftist movement in Italy, that was a cardinal, is Andrea Gallo. Maybe you should remember that name. He is the first cardinal, I think, from Italy, in the Catholic Church, that went on private to support official gays back in 2009. He was hardcore leftist, anti-fascist. He had a lot of problems with that John Paul during the 80s. Unfortunately, he didn't live to see this new pope. So, as I said, it's a good name to remember because he's a, in Europe leader of left. He was a leader of leftist in the Vatican. So, what is another problem with uh, religious groups supporting other political parties? <laughs> The problem is because they are seen as a public opinion as 
model and donors, they can't make a mistake, they have an unfair advantage in that public race. That's a huge problem because, as I said, they move, they give unfair advantage to certain political groups that they are supporting. Women in the religion speaking, I found that more, they are most commonly ministers and priests in Episcopal Church. For example, you have Church of England, which has very funny way of seeing it. Women can be priests, they can be whatever, but they can't be in highest ranks of the church. That policy changed in July 2014. And now, women now can be speaking, they now can be in charge of Church of England. They can be in highest levels of the church. Of course, just on paper, it's not happening. We're still in here because. <laughs> but they have it on paper, yes. <laughs> Do you have any questions? Yeah, I have one. Like, didn't the Canterbury Archbishop or whatever the hell they called, they like had an election and they actually contemplated choosing a gay black dude. Is that true? Um, they, they, they're supposed to be the most like evolved yeah. church in England. And do you know anything about those guys? No. No really. Only thing that I know about in England and the religion is that that is the only country that you can bet which pope is going to be next, which cardinal is going to be the next pope. Sporting bets gave good chances to cardinal from Ghana to be in the pope after Pope Benedict went to his last. Luckily for the kids, black man is not. <laughs> When we are saying about positive and negative things about organized religions, do you have any ideas? Positive or negative, whatever. Any suggestions? Okay. Of course not. I know that you don't care about positive side, but no. at least the negative. Okay. Basically, biggest aid to the poor is provided by religious organizations, mainly Vatican gives huge amounts of money and other religious groups. Fun fact is that in the United States of America, religious groups are biggest providers of free lessons of English as a second language for Spanish-speaking people who can't integrate in American society because they don't know language. So biggest provider of free lessons of English are religious groups in the United States of America that basically help people integrate for religion in society. What is also important when we talk about Christianity in Africa, for example, do you have any ideas? What was the best thing that they brought up? They brought up literacy to the that sub Saharan area because huge number of African languages before Christianity came in was just oral. Not a single written word, anything, no books, not sign languages or whatever. They changed with Christianity. They now spread literacy among Africa which further helped them, help them educate themselves and so basically they became better. Um, yes, okay. Who is literacy? English language? What do no, they no, speak? No, no, no. okay. African languages now became... Ah, oh, they, they, they transcribe African languages. They transcribe them. They start to write things and other stuff. As I said, African languages were mainly oral because before Christianity came to those areas. Now Christianity brought up literacy. I mean, they started writing down things. Now we have books which provide 
that knowledge goes from generation to generation more powerfully. Okay. If I ask you what is the relation between Whitney Houston and Wogan and Leos Mozart, what is the answer? The apart, W. Apart, <laughs> apart that they are both dead. <laughs> both those careers were highly funded at the beginning by religious groups. Why? Yes? Why? Hmm? Why? Why? Zašto? Zašto? Ne znam izgovorio. Oh, that's why. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Never seen the light. While Mozart was alive, basically religion was biggest employer. I mean, they gave most of the jobs. Yeah. So he had no either king or religion. Whitney Houston, she started her career in a choir church. Church choir, religious group. And she was helped when, at the beginning of her career from her religious group. So they helped her and became drug addict to die two years ago. And these guys would charge the pop for that. Yes, why not? So. Do you have any other questions about religion? If we talk about Serbia and the impact of religious leaders on political life, name one example. You know Zukorovic. <coughs> yeah, I said Serbia. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Zukorovic. <laughs> he has bigger, bigger support from the media than from public because he went really bad on elections because people don't like politicians with their religion politics. 2006 referendum on constitution of Serbia. What happened? Who helped? Petra. Yes. Petra went to move. For the first time and only time Petra of Serbian Orthodox Church went to vote. That sent a message to the people, it's now time to go to war. The people, there are some groups that say that that helped the institution pass by because of this close fight, because, because you need more than 50% people to vote. Yeah, from the constitution, 50% of the people need to vote. It was close, so. It was a huge help from the Serbian Orthodox Church in that way. He was highly criticized from secular anti-religious groups because church interfered in the religious life of the devil. But, okay. Yeah, I have a question regarding the church's involvement in the Balkan Wars. Okay. How were they, if, if in any way, I know they were in some way, involved in the conflict here, did they escalate it to any extent? Because you know that back in 91, Paul has said that we should defend our homes and whatnot. How did that impact the boots on the ground? Okay. No if he said we should defend our homes, you, can, you can't say really that it had a huge impact on the boots on the ground. But you have all basically military units here blessing from the religious groups, at least in Bosnia, as I know. But basically religious leaders defend themselves because they say we didn't know what they were doing on the front. Basically religious leaders didn't go to the front. Military units came to the religious centers, monasteries, mosques and other stuff. Basically, you had a huge impact um, of religion that people, that volunteers across the world of Islam came to Bosnia for the war. So you can claim that Islam was the force that dream, has driven more people to the war from abroad. The Russians coming to the military of the Republic of Srpska, so around 700 of them was involved 
they also had a huge impact. You even had some Bulgarians, you know, Serbian military during that war, driven by religion. So you can say that sense that religion was a force that drove more people from abroad to war. But it's hardly, I wouldn't say that religious leaders can any effect on causing more problems because it's a highly more complicated situation, was very specific, full of communism, uh, full of the country. Set, it was mainly settling scores from the World War II, it's highly, so it's also, so it was a unique opportunity. A lot of arm, arms left from JNA. So I wouldn't say that religious leaders caused more problems, but they definitely didn't do anything to stop. So do you have any more questions? Well, I would just like to ask about uh, Islam, for example. Okay. Whether hierarchy among the Sunni or among the Shia is very, very strong or not, is there a difference there? Uh, I mean, whether some Imams can have a different interpretation of Quran and how influential are they? Or is there just, you know, for example, with Shia Muslims, is there just one interpretation and that's it? Okay. For example, I know in Iran, Tawaks uh, have a huge impact on political life, but there is huge debate then about them. Uh, about Iran's nuclear program, where the Imam has a different opinion, there is a dialogue, they vote, they, but they have, when they vote, they are mainly unique, as I read. So, they don't go public with those problems and quarrels and fights, but they have private opinions about Sunnis. As I said, they hierarchy. I didn't find a lot. But I know that they are more conservatives than Shias, that's about it. There is not as much debate as among Shias uh -huh. religious leaders. That's what I found, I'm not certain, but Shia has bigger debates. But I found that they have debates about political life. I don't know about religious topics. So, because Shias religious leaders are highly known involved in political life and they debate about political issues but speaking religiously I wouldn't I don't know what to answer up. is there more debate in Sunnis or Shias but there is more debate in Shia community when it comes to political programs and questions. Anyone? Yeah, uh, like barring the Islam world and the entire debates about Sharia law and how much like generally religion influences law. Do we have any other example, bar Islam, where religion deeply impacted the legal system of a country? Do it. Deeply. Yeah, I mean like, does something that a religious leader claimed or claims currently or beforehand impacts the legal system of a country? Like how we perceive certain crimes, how we perceive, I don't know, like bodily integrity of a woman? There is a reason, for example, why why a lot of countries are against sex, same sex marriages because it's mainly because of the religious opinion of religious groups. So basically, they influence law with the sense that they pressure legislators to say no to same sex marriages. Basically, do you know what's the biggest problem now is when it comes to same sex marriages and religious groups in Europe? There is high court of in Strasbourg gave verdict about some same-sex marriage that if it's allowed in a country and country is secular, it needs to be allowed in a church or religious group. So you have huge rebellion amongst religious groups because they don't want to approve groups, uh, same-sex marriages. So now you have some balancing from the state that now they are creating partnerships, it's called, it's not called marriages, but because marriage has to be approved both in state and in church, if you call it marriage. Do you understand what I'm asking? Okay. Is it? 
Amen.